Hey guys, so I'm going to show you some local pictures of the city I live in. I live in Houston. And yeah, so I wanted to talk about my own opinion of why I'm not banned yet. I was able to go to pre-release and I looked at Jeremy MTG headquarters on Sleep Media. And the fact was he was not allowed to go to pre-release. I figured he would at least try, but it seemed like he just didn't go which makes sense because why would you drive all the way to pre-release and then get turned down because you were banned for life and you would also be if they didn't if they allowed you to play somebody would have definitely reported it and the store might have been in a lot of trouble so what happened was we had a discussion and they emailed me back saying that they wanted me to talk to their legal team who I was the same person. So previously I had interacted with their Hasbro, no, well both, Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast legal team. Their Wizards of the Coast legal team was just one, uh, she was just one worker. Uh, she didn't have a paralegal, anything like that. And she was the one making the actual phone calls, which is very strange. So normally when you have a team, you wouldn't begin by leaving a phone call at somebody's place of work. That obviously is not, you know, it can't, it can't be standard practice. It just cannot be for a for their only general counsel to leave, to find a phone number and leave multiple messages at the place of work of a person who you want to talk to. When their email address and everything else is Facebook and is uh, readily available, why would you call their work, their place of employment and talk to their boss? It doesn't make any sense. Anyway, I feel like they are not going to ban me because I didn't do anything wrong. It's very difficult for them to prove that I did something wrong. And I've been very cautious because obviously I want to play Magic Arena. This has changed my buying behavior. And I used to buy a lot of Magic cards, as many of you guys know. I no longer buy as much. And when I'm buying Magic cards, I'm only buying cards that are on the reserve list or in bulk. So it's not direct. The it's not a secondarily. It will support Wizard of the Coast by promoting that their product is value, but it's not going to line their coffers directly. I've also not played Magic Arena. I think that's a big loss for them because the reason I'm not playing it is. I spend a lot of money on mobile games, uh, Fire Emblem Heroes, Pokemon Go. You can't really spend that much money in Pokemon Go because you got to walk, right? You you physically have to walk to spend, you know, your egg incubators and stuff like that. And the Fate Grand Order, which Fate Grand Order, Fire Emblem, probably the two most expensive mobile games right now. Maybe Class of Clans is a little bit more. I'm not going to play Magic Arena because they can take my account away. And unlike Magic Online, so Jeremy, they refunded him his money. Uh, Zach, Jesse, uh, who they took away his account, they refunded him his money. And there's a liquid out for Magic Online. But for Magic Arena, there is no out. And a lot of their system is exactly like a Japanese, it's just like Fire Emblem, it's a gacha game where you got to fill up this meter and then you have some wild cards. I mean, people who don't play gacha games or Japanese gacha games, they might be confused and think these are good things. Oh, wild card, that's a good thing. Oh, fill up my meter bank, that's great. No, no, no. Guys, <laughs> I'm here to tell you <laughs> that these games have very... Um, you want to disconnect money from the item because once you buy the item it's worth no money so once you buy a booster pack or the coins or diamonds whatever you're doing it's gone magic online is a little different you can sell it 
you can sell it for money. You can get your money back. For Magic Arena, there's no way to get your money back. Um, you might say, oh, you can sell an account. I'm sure that's going to be prohibited, you know, sharing and selling accounts because otherwise people would just use the same account. Uh, same with uh, Hearthstone and stuff like that. There's stuff in the policy, which means they can terminate your account. But in this case, when they terminate your account, unlike when they terminated uh, Jeremy, MTG headquarters, and Zach Jesse's account, there's no way for them to give you the money back. And that to me is very, very scary. Uh, so I am behaving differently. Otherwise, you know, once MTG Arena comes out, I will. I mean, throwing out four figures on it initially when a game starts is not something beyond what I can do. Uh, I've spent far more on Fire Emblem Heroes and Fake Grand Order. And typically when I get really excited on a mobile game, that's when the game launches. And then I spend here and there. So, yeah. Uh, my behavior has changed. I have bought far less cards, especially boxes. And I'm not going to play Magic Arena at all. Although for this channel, it would be very good to play Magic Arena. Mainly because I, they have my DCI number, they have my name. And it would be super easy for them to ban me if I were to post videos on Magic Arena, right? And I'm assuming Magic Arena, you're going to have to, it's pay to win, uh, at least initially. Um, now, of course, you can fill up your meters and stuff, and that's all great. And you can do your dailies to collect rewards and things. But uh, to get really good decks, it's just like Hearthstone. You got to pay, the whole point is for them to pay money. Nothing is free. And if not enough people pay money, then they'll get rid of it. Like they did with Magic Duels, right? Or duels of the planeswalker. So I think I'm I'm not banned because I it would be very foolish for them to ban me. They would face legal ramifications. I don't have a there's nothing I can do to them until they ban me because I don't have standing. They didn't take anything away from me. I can still play magic exactly the same way I did before. And I think it's harder to justify my banning than it's it's very I don't understand how HQ gets a year or not a, a lifetime in Alex Bercini, the biggest cheater, caught multiple times on camera, banned two times, not once, twice, is only given like eight months or a year. And, and even some of these sexual predators, I mean, they just are, I mean, they're going to come back to the game before uh, Zach Jesse, for instance, he's going to come back to the game around, I think, two, two, 2040 or something like that, 2050. I mean, Jeremy has a lifetime ban. I was watching his stream and it was kind of sad because clearly this is a guy who lo loves going to pre-release. He loves filming and vlogging about it. And he's just streaming pre-release. Uh, he would much rather be at the event. And I think the store would much rather have him. And, you know, money is money. And that's why I'm scared. I am incredibly scared on, of the fact that at any time, for any reason, they can take away your Magic Arena account. And that is why I'm not, I'm not buying into it at all. I can tell you that when you have Fire Emblem and stuff and you purchase it on iTunes, if you ask for a refund, iTunes knows that you asked for a refund, but Fire Emblem cannot connect the refund to that particular account. So there's a level of protection. Now, the reason that you want to ask for a refund all the time is because it would be on your iTunes account and eventually your iTunes would be upset at you. But Fire Emblem would not have that connection. So... I, it's just fascinating to me that they haven't banned me, but they have changed my behavior. And I'm kind of behaving as if I were to get banned sometime soon. Because why should I put money into these products when in fact they can just take away my Magic Arena account and that will be the end of that. It's very sad because I want to do Magic Arena 
and I loved Magic Duels, and I was sponsored to do Magic Duels, and then it crashed. I think I told that, then I couldn't log in. I used my own money to buy coins, and then they took my coins away and my whole collection away because the whole server crashed for multiple months, and then suddenly it came back alive, and they're like, hey, congrats, and came back. But nonetheless, like I wanted a digital Magic product that was much better than Magic Online. I wanted to promote the product for free, but now I'm in the scenario where I can never play Magic Arena because at any given time, they can hit me and take away my account, which if they took away my Fire Emblem, I have two Fire Emblem accounts. They probably both cost $2,000 plus. My Fate, Fate Grand Order account, my English one, I have two, I have English and Japanese. My English one is only like a few hundred dollars, but my Japanese one is well into the $3,000, if not more. So that's the same thing I would do for Magic Arena. I would spend a ton of money, especially initially upon launch. I would make some videos, whether you guys liked it or not, just like Fire Emblem. And I would be promoting their product for free. And I don't see why why they should stop me from doing that. Um, but I'm not going to put money into a, something where I could be banned for for any reason. Well, I'm already on this hot list, right? Anyway, bye guys.